All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we have a real beauty of a fig that we were able to ripen. And we're gonna talk about this variety for you guys. It's the first time I'm ever talking about this fig. It's called the Godfather. And it's only fitting, right, that the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the don of the <laughs> Fig Mafia group is growing a fig called Godfather. And this is, believe it or not, a fig that lots of credit goes to my friend Coop. He's such a great guy. He um, works in the TV and movie business and was able to actually track down the same exact tree that was used in the Godfather film. Um, this is, I think, from the scene, if I'm not mistaken, where Vito Corleone uh, is older, he's in Italy, he's dying, and he's there, I think, with his grandson, and they're in this uh, courtyard with all these tomato plants. And then he kind of falls over and then is dead. And it's some very quick shot, and in the, ba in the background of that whole kind of scene is this fig tree. And so so Coop was able to find the exact tree from that. And I think he told me, believe it or not, that this particular fig, there is a copy of it, or the mother tree of this, is in somewhere in New York City, somewhere in New York. And that he says it produces really reliably, and uh, it's quite a hardy fig. So for me, you know, when he gave me this tree, I was not really into it all that much because... You know, I think it's cool to have something from The Godfather, but years ago on Fix for Fun, when this was first talked about, uh, there was a grower named Herman Two who was widely respected as probably the, you know, the the probably the most respected grower on Fix for Fun, and so he was really good at identifying varieties, and he had identified this fig as. Sal's Corleone, I think, or um, Columbaro Nero. I mean, there's so many names for that fig. And I think he looked at the leaves and the overall fig and thought, eh, it's probably very similar. And then, so I was kind of turned off. And then, of course, I spoke to Coop about this. Um, you know, heard what he had to say. And then, of course, even shortly after that, people had ripened this thing. And clearly, it wasn't Sal's Corleone or Columbaro Nero or any of those figs, it looked rather unique. And so, I don't know, at some point in there, I received a tree from Coop. He so generous with this variety, trying to get people uh, to grow this fig. And so, here it is. I planted it in the ground, and it's been quite a while, I think, since he gave it to me. It took a while for this thing to get established, and... Um, you know, it also can kind of struggle, I find, fruiting from dieback, as a lot of the trees we have planted here in the ground, you know, we've been consistently cutting them back to six to 12 inches and, and relying on the, the suckers to come up and to form fruit on those suckers. And we've learned so many things about that whole process and, uh, you know, needing the right amount of light. And this is just a really shady spot uh, in general. This tree probably only gets about five hours of direct light in the summer um, so not a lot of light at all and not only that but the suckers really are in this hormonal imbalance and that they they love to grow and grow and grow and this really what this tree has done for many years is continue to grow and not really put out many fruits so this is the first year I'm really getting a taste and so it's been a long time coming and I'm really impressed with what I've seen so far. This is a fig that has ripened super, super well. Um, the hang time I don't think is really all that long, or I should say the susceptibility window is not really all that long. Um, and just in general, I have been super impressed with the overall shape, the way that it hangs. Um, this fig looks rather unique. Uh, and in general, it's beautiful. I think this fig is gonna taste fantastic. I'm, it's got a closed eye. 
here's the outside. Look at this interesting, um, that interesting stem there. Um, actually, is this the neck? No, this seems, this is the stem. It has a very interesting fat stem down there where the stem attaches to the neck. And again, this is really quite a beaut. I know that the inside, I think, is more along the lines of something figgy. Yeah, there you go. So we have a bit of a, a bit of an amber caramel colored slightly red interior it's a little bit brown and the one on the right looks like a totally different color just because of the angle of the the fig but really nice and you know i you know let me try this before we go on a little bit further here in the video let's taste it It's very good, guys. Very sweet. Um, quite figgy. Um, it has a great texture to it. It definitely, you can tell it ripens super well. Um, for my money, though, this fig does remind me quite a bit of another fig, though, that I've grown in the past and that I've tasted actually at the Connecticut Ag Station when I went up there to visit Mario and the colors look very similar too. The whole fig looks similar. I have to compare the shapes of the two to really know for sure, because this fig has got a nice stem. It's got a nice stem to it. The figs are, I would say maybe, um, almost pyriform. Maybe you could get, maybe you could say they're a bit, um, round or spherical. But it does remind me of Osborne Prolific. And even the leaves, I have speculated looking at the leaves before, that it shares the same leaves as Osborne Prolific. Now the problem is, with Osborne Prolific, there's a lot of Osborne Prolifics around. Um, one of which, in I think either the USDA's collection, or even John Verdick's collection, if you go to figs for fun and you look at the the variety list there there's an osborne prolific that's like green skinned the red interior and i think my friend danny coop and i have a friend danny who grew that fig and in any case this looks to me just like and tastes just like osborne prolific problem is i don't have any osborne prolific trees anymore to even compare side by side but i know the fig dries really well I know it has a really good figgy taste. This one ripened rather quickly. It's really nice. Short hang time. It hangs well on the tree. Uh, sweeter flavor, brown sugar, caramel flavor to it. Um, for my money, that's what I think this is. But again, I could be wrong. I need to compare the, the shape. And the other problem is, again, there's not really great information out there on Osborne Prolific. And you know, something weird I learned actually years ago about Osborne Prolific was that there was a grower named uh, Ray Givens. I think he had passed a number of years ago, but he had a, um, a website and he documented a lot of the trees that he found and said something about them. And, um, a lot of the trees he found somewhere in the South were actually Osborne Prolific. I think this was at one time an extremely popular fig, um, I have no doubt. And so for my money, um, it's probably the case that this fig was indeed, um, you know, all over the country. It's rather hardy, uh, you know, it's a good performer. Um, it tastes good. It doesn't, it makes sense to me in, in that this would be a fig that you would find kind of like you would find Hardy Chicago or Celeste. A lot of these figs all over the country. 
And so, yeah, that's, to me, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and for that, I do think that maybe this one here is very similar to Osborne Prolific in that, again, we have to also think about the epigenetics in that, is this exactly the same as Osborne Prolific? Probably not. Maybe there's some minor differences here and there. And that's the beauty of it. And um, it's kind of very timely because I've been wanting to find and learn more about Osborne Prolific. I wanted to find more varieties. There was a guy, uh, we've been, we talked about it, I think, in our live stream we did recently. And I, there was a guy who messaged me on one of my videos, on one of the comments, and message uh, and was mentioning about Osborne Prolific and how good it was and how he was surprised that a lot of people have not really given it much of a thought and how it's not really all that popular. Um, so here it is. I think the Godfather, at least I, that's my thought is here, Coop, is that there's a fig again, very similar to, or that it's a very similar fig to a fig called Osborne Prolific. And for me, I love this one, man. This is really good. I appreciate the fact you gave it to me. Um, I'm gonna grow this fig probably for a very long time. So um, yeah, I can't wait till next year because we're gonna bend these branches over. I already have actually an air layer right here and uh, it's taken. I can remove this probably very soon. And then this branch is already bent down towards the ground. We'll cover this with uh, mulch and different things. And then this will easily fruit like a crap ton of fruit next year along with probably most of the trees in here uh, once we do the same thing but the lack of light in this spot has made it a bit difficult but you know what believe it or not in this whole area here out of the 20 or so trees I have planted right here this is the only one this year with fruit so that's a really good sign again I think this tree is probably rather hardy uh, a great choice for those of us in the Northeast it seems to even dry well the hang time seemed rather short um, that's like an instant, really great fig. So anyway, shout out to Coop. Thanks for watching this one, guys. We'll see you soon. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Catch you guys for the next one.